This is the third video in this series. We will be covering themes and navigation. We will be building on what we learned in the first two videos. We are, uh, we are using jQuery Mobile 1.2.0 and jQuery uh, version 1.8.2 in all of these examples. So jQuery Mobile comes with inbuilt themes. It has five themes that it comes out of the box. A theme is basically um, a look and feel, color, layout, icons, etc. And uh, we'll also be going in detail about how do you navigate within a jQuery mobile app. We'll be covering a lot of use cases about how you navigate to a subpage, a new page, external page, using Ajax, non-Ajax, how do you add a back button, how do you have pop-ups or dialogues, and how do you cover transitions. So data theme is the attribute that you use to activate a particular inbuilt theme. Like in this example, data theme A indicates that you want for this page to show everything using data theme A. So it looks like this. It has a dark black color uh, theme and white font. So when you say data theme A, it automatically gets a lot of these colors, a lot of these gradients, icons, font style. So that is what theme means. So there are inbuilt themes that you can use. So theme A looks like this. Theme B looks like this. It's blue. C is like whitish. D is gray. E is yellowish. And if you specify a theme, like for example F, it doesn't exist, right? So jQuery Mobile does a pretty good job at gracefully degrading and at least giving you a UI that's usable. And it'll just show you what it has. So you can also mix and match, like my header and content here is using theme A, but my footer is using C, right? You can also, you know, using data position attribute, make your footer stick to the bottom of your page. Like if you say data position fixed in your footer, it'll always stick down, as you can see here. And this is also using mix and match theme. You can also add your own theme. We'll have a special video, 10 minute video for that. We'll be covering theme roller and how do you add your own theme and how you can use it um, as a separate video. But you can do it, is what I'm trying to say. You can have your own theme and you can also use an existing theme. So that covers themes. Now we go on to an interesting navigation topic. So there's a there are three there, there are three there are maybe four main parts. First is how do you create a navigation bar, and then how you navigate between different pages. Those pages could be internal to your app. Those pages could be external to your app, and you would want to navigate using AJAX or non AJAX or a full load. And how do you add a back button? And how do you transition? Like, what does the behavior look like? So there are four main parts when you talk about navigation. How do you create a navbar, different kinds of pages, back button, and transition. So we'll cover each one of them. So let's see how we can create a navbar. There are three main parts. So you use a data role navbar, as specified here, to specify your navbar. And um, the output looks something like this. You see this navbar, this bottom? That's the output that looks when you specify an unordered list of items into a data role navbar div. It gives you a navigation bar. And then you can also uh, specify certain icons in your list items. And you can specify where you want those icons. Like this is saying it wants the icon on the top. And it wants an alert icon, right? So that's how you specify the nav bar. And there are two different kinds of pages that you navigate to. You can navigate to a page that is, you know, in the first example, you can navigate by a dialog. You want a pop-up, right? So let's take an example of how it looks. So this is an example of a pop-up. You see that there was a pop-up and, and there was a behavior. There's an X button, X cross mark that'll do a reverse transition 
So that's an example of a pop-up, right? So that was a page within your page using a dialog pop-up. And that uses Ajax by default. And second is, you know, a page within your page, um, a sub-page within your page, um, but you don't want a dialog box, right? That also uses Ajax. So if you go here, it's a sub-page within your page. It opens up this page, then you can also go back. Um, so that's a page within your page. And this is using dialog, this is not using a dialog. The third is an external page. <coughs> external page could be the page that is not, the code of that page would not reside in within your page. So for an example, this is an external page. It has a separate title, no footer, and you can still navigate to it. But it's a jQuery mobile page. The fourth example is an external page which is not a jQuery mobile page. For external pages, you would want to not use Ajax. And the way you do that is you, sp you specify data rel external, and it always does a full load when you, when you specify using that. So let's say I want to use um, in my navbar link to google.com, which is not, a, not within my page. It's an external page. <coughs> so that's the four, four examples of how you navigate between different, um, on, into different pages. And then the third important part is how do you add a global back button, right? So for example, I navigated to this page. I in this page, I already had an inline back button, that's why it shows. But in this page, I don't have a back button. The only way I can have a back button is by using the browser's back button. So I might want a back button here because it could be a native app in, in future, right? It could be a hybrid app, not a native app. So you can do, you can add a global back button by um, overriding certain options within the mobile object. So the way you do this is you, you have jQuery, you have jQuery mobile. Between the two, you bind on a mobile init event that, and then you specify that I want to add a back button on a mobile object. So you say $.mobile page prototype options add back button true. So what this is basically doing is that it's saying document when this event fires called mobile event, mo mobile init, I want to override my mobile object options in a certain way, right? I'll go into the detail. This requires a little bit of jQuery logic in a separate video of how do you override this, but this is how you generally do it. You bind on a mobile event init event and then override certain things. But you do all of this before the including jQuery mobile library itself. Let's see that in action. So we saw that uh, here uh, we did not have a back button, right? But if we if you want to see that back button on a page, we can simply uncomment this, right? It's the same code. And then any app that we link to, and then we refresh this page. Even this is an external page, it will still have a back button. That's how we added the back button, right? So every page, if, if the inline page has it, it will automatically have it. But even the pages that we control, we can go with a back button, not to an external page, like google.com doesn't have it. So that's how you add a global back button action. You would also want to add a global transition behavior, right? Like when you click on a link, right now it's fading, right? By default, it fades. And you go to a sec separate page, there's also a fading behavior. But what if you want this to be like a sliding behavior? And you want the sliding behavior when you navigate for all of your code base. You do that using a similar JavaScript override. You override the default page transition attribute of the mobile object, and then you say, I want slide. The default is fade. So let's see that in action. Let's uncomment this piece of code. And then hit refresh. So 
So now this should slide. See? So that's how you add a default sliding behavior for the code that doesn't specify it. So that, those are all the four aspects of navigation. Let's recap. We learned that there are five different inbuilt themes. And then you can navigate to a subpage, external page, using Ajax, non-Ajax. So there are four different modes of navigation. We learned how to create a navigation bar. We learned how to fix it to a specific position. We learned how to add an icon. And then we can also learn, we also learned about how to add the icon at a specific position. We briefly went over how to add uh, global behaviors like back buttons and transitioning events. There's going to be a separate 10-minute video that covers how to do this in detail and what exactly it's doing under the hood. So that is the end of this video. All of these slides and um, code will be available in this GitHub link. It's at jQuery Mobile School. And uh, I'll also be linking the videos here uh, in the slides. So you can check out this code and this, this should run independently. And um, yeah, if you have any feedback, reply back to this video and I'll try to add more. Thanks. Bye.